Now, I just want to say, on behalf of all those who feel exactly the same as I do, that it's about time we took another look at George W. Bush, and I say, come on now, everybody join on in now. Big old why, thank you, George Bush. It's just, let's just call this my little, oh, thank you note to George Bush for all his hard efforts over all those eight years. And also in appreciation of the recent policy scam, which we'll be dealing with forever, but, you know, cleaning out the, the cleaning, out, cleaning out the Treasury before the Democrats could spend any of it, that was brilliant. Anyway, luckily it's been arranged, that won't be too long in terms of dealing with it forever, but... Can you say it with me? Thanks, thanks, George W. Bush, for all your efforts and hard work which have led, which have led your decisions and your administration solely to blame. Thank you for being the decider, by the way. To leave us in the midst of so many dire and wonderfully and rapidly expanding problems so that many people are not just wondering if they will have a job or money, but that even if this plan will make it through another 50 years. So, hey, thanks for all the hard work and for relieving us and all our grandchildren of any money. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I see there probably won't be any planet for little, little dears to live on. I see. Okay. Everyone dead and all? What? Gosh, Mr. President, you're so smart you probably knew that. That's why, that's why you didn't leave any money for him. Anyway, so that's why you and your cronies went so far as to commit grand larceny even at the end, scraping out the last of any money in the Treasury. Wasn't much left for Obama to do with anyway. After your eight years of partying and I with your Halliburton and God only knows faceless filthy rich gang, but just must have felt like the gold the old times, eh? Except for the cocaine or I mean I mean to presume I I mean I mean I you can you can have cocaine who might Oh I yeah, well, yeah, what, I'm glad to hear you don't, You do not partake like the others. It's just a, I mean, George, Fred, my man here, come on. There was some pretty weird dancing stuff. Things that had me wondering at the end there, yeah. I mean, you were acting really strange beyond something I don't know about or do know about, maybe. First thing's better than, co finding things better than cocaine, getting away with it, you say, well, <laughs> I'm not about to judge, I mean. If we could have Rush Limbaugh asking for drug users to be hung up by their fingernails even as he's got a constant drip for a codeine fix and he gets away scot-free, why shouldn't you have your fun? You always said it was hard work. But i got to get back to that stunt with the Treasury at the very end. I mean, come on, I mean, you know, we've had people stealing from the government before, but in broad daylight, the very end, this is the biggest pull off robbery in history but anyway I, I get ahead of myself I'm just so impressed anyway I mean this I gotta know I mean many a lesser criminal mind let's let's say would never go back and get it again let alone in broad daylight in front of the entire world so God was this all your idea to totally take everything while you could somebody else's Anyway, it was brilliant. First, you enlist the support of that guy Paulson, uh, uh, Hank Paulson. Or now, now that I know more about him, being worth seven hundred million dollars, like he is, almost like a billion, and, and like getting bonuses of thirty-seven million in two thousand five, and then sixteen point four million the next year before he came into office with you. Well, what? <laughs> why could it actually be that he was the one that talked you into it? No. Surely he'd have to be characterized as one of those, them filthy writs that you helped to create, making people wonder who's really calling the shots in Washington. But never mind, it was if it was his good idea, and now I understand he's had plenty of experience being involved with the folks who did Watergate and all the way back in his early days with Ehrlichman and all. So no, that, no doubt, he's got lots of good ideas. You can't got to give him that. But hell, don't want to take any shine off your apples. I mean... No, you chose him and and uh, want to take, and despite his background, managed to get him on your side and portrayed, and por he was portrayed as one of the most well-respected men on Wall Street at the time. I remember that well. Every, I never know about his background, and I was most respected. Everybody said it was a big, a good pick for you. Of course, that was the old Wall Street, because we now know those bonuses and stuff aren't too popular right now. 
Anyhow, brilliant move. You put this man of yours on task for the high pressure auto trading that you knew would be required to pull off such a heist. So you had your guy Paulson, former head of Goldman Sachs, coming to take this position as Secretary of Treasury for you, and now we find out that none of that money went where it was intended to go. And it did not change the situation, but rather exacerbated it. Brilliant! More on that later, but Jesus, I gotta say though, pretty incredible. I mean, Paulson himself gets like a, what is it, it's, uh, what is it, 50 some billion to a German bank that then owes Goldman Sachs 16 billion? And so he makes off with 16 billion dollars on top? Is that like this? And stay away from him. Man, he's just too smart for all of us, okay? I think he'll have. Well, I think he's already had his hands in all of our pockets. I forget. I'm sorry about that. But anyway. No, come on. Let's let we want to go over your accomplishments tonight, Mr. President. I mean, I mean, I mean the whole thing. You know, going to Congress there, getting him to tally up that unbelievable seven hundred, you know, almost a billion dollars in like a thing of criminal. I mean, they could not get that high. I mean, oh, well, anyway, so. We heard how you guys gathered these guys together in Congress. I mean, how it was done, you know? It's like, must have been like one of those movies, like, oh, and then pop. Like an ocean's 33, yeah! Anyway, so you gathered those suckers, those guys in Congress together, who had the money, huh? And, <laughs> you know, like, we heard afterwards how you guys gathered congressional leaders and without exactly explaining how it would happen of course congressmen could not expect it to understand the workings of economics and high finance like a Paulson could so Paul, kindly Paulson and his deputies explained using analogies now how nice of them to bring it down to their level like that level of congressmen you know giving them analogies things they understood you know so sweet of them and the analogy they used was that you know his basic just analogies. If this is like this, this is like this. Yeah, like that. Just well, say how cute you are, W. I mean, it was so cute. Anyway, the well, analogy they used was that if Congress didn't cough up the dough pronto, perhaps those weren't the exact words, my bad, but from what I understand, anyway, the consequences, and this has been getting out, tell me, was it, this was all you, right? I mean, I, I've been thinking all along, and I said, it was you, I'm sure. That's your... Anyway, the consequences of not paying up that day would be that of a global economic meltdown. Global economic meltdown. Tell me, come on, tell me now. That part was you, right? I mean, come on, man. A terminal global economic meltdown that would wait. Wait, I'm getting an inkling here. Was this, was this nice part, Chinese? I mean, really, come on. I remember this is like, end, man. End modern civilization as we know it for the foreseeable future. Oh, come on. <laughs> wow, it gives me shivers. Was it <laughs> shivers and timbers? It sure does. There ain't no auto salesman in the cities could come up with something so absolutely well disabling. You guys really took those suckers in Congress out by the knees. How could they have had a chance? And boy, there's that implied nuclear thing again. The meltdown. Yeah. Doesn't even have to make sense. I mean, economics melting, but hey, close enough, how clever. I mean, I mean, a whole image of a mushroom cloud might just work stupendously to get us into a war, and now this being not economics, oh my god, I, I see I see it. Oh, it's like the 50s movie, you know, make Oh, please help me, we're melting, it's economics melting. Oh, yes, that's probably that's what you get now. I get it, yeah. And. Yeah, super scary. Heck, anything like that. Anything like from those 50s horror flicks. Just good stuff. Heck, you know that most people believe that stuff anyway. So I, I see you feed them what they always feared anyway. Brilliant, brilliant. But that's my George. The W himself going with what he knows. And hey, why bother, why bother coming up with anything else? That card's a winner for you, man. Come on, level with me. I just got to know. I won't tell anyone else. Was that Cheney with the end of civilization part? Come on, he's really lo living the Wild West out there in Wyoming. He's probably thinking Mad Maxing it and everything. Like, come on, he's probably that. It's got to be him. That just so he's just so Darth Vader. Who else could think like that? Come on, please tell me I'm right. I feel like I know this guy.